When Leonard Skinner emerged onto the world stage in 1973, for the band, it was the result of their collective determination, having struggled to gain real recognition since they had formed eight years beforehand. And although they were immediately identified both in the music industry and the press as yet another act in the booming southern rock movement of the time, it soon became apparent that these Floridians were not only an entirely distinctive musical unit, but also one of the greatest rock bands in the world. They wanted to cash in on something, you know, that would be unique to them. You know, a southern redneck biker band. It was just such a crazy concept. But they were just audacious enough to make it work. Leonard Skinner was the show stuff. When I walked to the stage with Leonard Skinner, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. It was like the gladiators going into the arena. And the driving force of the band was Ronnie Van Zandt, a tough blue-collar brawler who led Skinner from the front line with his powerful stage presence, distinctive vocals, and his gritty, honest lyrics. Headstrong and domineering, his energy and vision propelled the group from its formation until its tragic end in 1977. From the minute I joined the band to the minute we had the plane crash, it was the hardest working band I've ever known of. That was due primarily to the work ethic of Ronnie Van Zant. He was the true leader, writer, mentor of that band. Ronnie was spectacular. He, he just had a charisma all his own. And man, he grabbed my heart, hook, line, and sinker. I said, man, everything that comes out of his mouth is meaningful. Ronnie Van Zant was a great songwriter. He was a terrific lyricist who and an observant person and a very smart guy and, and knew how to be ambiguous about stuff. He was very sharp. They put out six albums. 80, 90% of those songs are absolutely top rate. It's amazing. Ronnie Van Zant was born in Jacksonville, Florida, in 1948, the eldest child of parents Lacey and Marion Van Zant. At the time, this port city on the northeastern tip of Florida was undergoing rapid expansion, yet the Van Zants settled away from the industrial and commercial center of downtown Jacksonville in the semi-rural area of the west side. Here, Ronnie grew up alongside his five siblings in a small family home close to the unspoiled beauty of the Cedar River, known to the locals as Cedar Creek. They weren't guided by any particular rules. Lacey Van Zant was, home, was almost never there. The father, he was a, a hard-living, truck-driving man, and he was, he was very rarely home. And the mother, who everybody called Sis, was kind of a hands-off kind of parent. Ronnie was a barefoot country boy, you know, on the west side of Jacksonville. We lived down the street there at Moe Street, and me and Ronnie just became fishing buddies. We'd ride our bicycles down to Cedar Creek, I'd be on the handlebars, or he'd be on the handlebars, and we'd go down and take a croaker sack, and we'd catch mullet. We'd catch a sack full of mullet, bring them back and give them to everybody, some black folks on the other end of the street down there. We gave fish to everybody. Although fishing was the young Van Zant's favored pastime during his childhood, the area surrounding the family home on Mull Street was a rough, working-class neighborhood, renamed Shantytown by its residents. And the quick-tempered Ronnie soon developed, in part through necessity, into one of the toughest kids on the block. The old saying, then and now even, is this, the, the farther north you go in Florida, the more in the south you are. And when you were in Jacksonville, you were at the upper tip of Florida, and it was pretty bad, it was pretty bad country. Ronnie lived in a neighborhood that's where 12 o'clock noon on a summer day, you didn't want to be in that neighborhood, okay? And I lived about a quarter mile away, and the house is not much bigger in this room. But they were brick, and they were a whole level up from where the Ronnie's people were. They used to call us the rich folks. He lived in the roughest neighborhood they was. It was blue collar, and it was working class people, rednecks, you know. <laughs> Happy to be a redneck, you know. And <laughs> so uh, it was a great neighborhood back then. We called it the shanty town. They call it the bottom now. <laughs> the West Side was, everybody knew each other in the West Side. We played baseball together, we went fishing together, but 
we wanted to live here all our lives, but we knew we weren't going to really amount to much of anything here besides work. You worked for the railroad or you joined the Navy. That was pretty much it. Or you went to college to become a lawyer. And uh, starting a band just seemed to be a whole lot more fun. Despite being drawn to music from an early age, in particular country and the work of Merle Haggard, and having already developed an enthusiasm for singing, Van Zant's earliest ambitions were not artistic, yet they all involved breaking out of shantytown.